this morning, if you would, open your Bible for a, a little bit to John chapter number one. John chapter number one. And uh, praise the Lord, moms and dads, for bringing your kids today and and uh, a little unprepared. Next week, we'll have junior church for you. Are you taking junior church this week? Uh, yes, next week, next week, we will have junior church. And uh, and so it's been uh, uh, just a, a uh, several weeks since we've had so many children in the service. And and uh, and so uh, just uh, got out of the habit of that and praise the Lord for it. Uh, so please come bring your uh, your children again next week. We'll have junior church for them. Uh, so glad to have you here today. Uh, if if you didn't see uh, Holly and, and Joe, they have a couple of new boys staying with them. And uh, so be sure and get a chance to meet them as well. And and glad you brought them to church today. And and uh, your your mom's been having us pray for them. So uh, just adjusting to your home and your family and your family adjusting to them. And and uh, uh, as uh, as foster parents, that's uh, sometimes uh, just a chore. So uh, so anyway, hang in there. And uh, it, it's it, it's a, a, a noble uh, we say noble cause uh, anyway, just uh, just uh, praise the Lord for uh, for foster parents willing to uh, to uh, uh, take care of, of children and and uh, uh, give them uh, the love and attention and a place uh, for them. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, just praise the Lord. James is here today. Praise the Lord, James. And uh, just so excited. Uh, just a, a new Christian and and a growing reading his Bible and, and just so thankful uh, that uh, that uh, God's just uh, working uh, in and just excited to see what God's going to do. Uh, in uh, in James life and and uh, and still excited to see what God's going to do in my life and we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning John chapter number one and uh, verse number thirty five not about you James we're going to talk about uh, uh, about what God can do in our lives so uh, but uh, uh, John chapter number one and as we're continuing through the book of John uh, John chapter one we're up to verse number thirty five uh, verse thirty five and. Uh, we read uh, just briefly 35 and 36 last week, just looking at the different pictures of Christ here in John chapter one, uh, that he is the word, that he is God, that he is the creator, uh, that he is life, <coughs> that he is light, that he's full of mercy, that he's full of grace and and uh, just many uh, just uh, presentations of, uh, of Jesus uh, here in, in John chapter number one and uh, here in verse number uh, 35. <coughs> and we looked at last week, he is the lamb of God. And uh, so John uh, calls him the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And uh, now before his disciples, he states it again. Verse 35, it says again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak <coughs> and they followed Jesus. <coughs> then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted, the Christ and he brought him to Jesus and uh, you know when he gets saved that's what God calls us to do go tell somebody else you got saved uh, go and and uh, get excited about the Lord and and uh, bring them to Jesus too and and the Bible says here uh, Andrew he meets Jesus and and uh, he, uh, he he then uh, immediately he goes and he finds Peter his brother and uh, he uh, uh, he brings him to meet Jesus too and the Bible says in verse 42 and he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and there findeth Philip, saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. 
Now, Nathaniel wasn't one to accept flattery. And uh, uh, he had met Jesus before. And so Jesus is saying, Behold, an Israelite, and he did eat, in whom is no guile. This is a, a moral, upstanding man. And uh, uh, Nathaniel, the Bible says in, in verse 48, Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? I mean, how can you say this? We're strangers. Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. I'd like to think Nathaniel was doing his morning devotion, spending time with God, and God spoke to him there under that tree. And now all of a sudden he comes to meet Jesus, and Jesus is telling him, I'm the one that met with you under that tree. Because notice Nathaniel's response. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Only Nathaniel and God knew that Nathaniel was under that tree that morning. And, uh, and so he acknowledged Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 50, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under a fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Verse 51, He saith unto him, Verily, verily I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now look at the signification of uh, the significance of verse 51. You'd have to go back to the Old Testament in Jacob's day. And Jacob saw a vision there at Bethel of this ladder that was reaching from earth up to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending upon that ladder. And, and here Jesus is telling them, and Israelites, they knew that account, and, and uh, uh, he's telling them, Jesus Christ is that ladder. Or I'd like to more say, he's that elevator. Because you don't climb up to heaven. The Bible says, no man climbeth up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, who is in heaven, the Son of, uh, son of God. And, and, and so, uh, uh, you don't have to climb up on that ladder. Uh, the Bible says that God puts you in his hand, and he's going to lift you up to heaven. And uh, but they didn't have elevators in their days. So he just sees, you know, this going up and down and he attributes it to a ladder and and uh, say, well, Jesus is the elevator. Jesus is the ladder. And, uh, uh, you know, as we look at these pictures in in John and and uh, there's uh, there's no climbing up to heaven. Uh, no uh, uh, step by step, rung by rung. If you uh, take this step and this step, you know, you need to uh, first trust Christ. You get to the first rung and then uh, you get baptized, you get to the next rung and. And then you, uh, uh, I don't know, you, uh, you stop lying, you get to the next rung, or uh, maybe you, uh, you, you stop uh, gossiping or uh, whatever, get to the next rung, and then you, you kick the alcohol, you get to the next rung, and boy, uh, just through life, and, and you go to church, and every time you go to church, you get into another rung. I wonder how many rungs there would be to get to heaven. Uh, probably more than we could climb in a lifetime or several lifetimes, and uh, that's not the way it works. Uh, you trust Christ as your Savior, and you're guaranteed. Uh, access to heaven and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we we think of uh, you know a salvation Christ is the Savior and and so when he pictured there uh, you know to them he says uh, from you're going to see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man he was saying I am the way uh, and uh, that uh, uh, Jesus Christ is the way uh, to eternal life and 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 so along with these pictures, you could you could put here that, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is that ladder that's pictured in uh, in the Old Testament. Many other pictures that we've, uh, you know, uh, we could see in John chapter one so much in the gospel, according to John, uh, for uh, for us to, to, to get to know Jesus Christ. <coughs> well, I'd love to have all my voice back, but. I don't have it yet, but uh, again, uh, you know, we're looking at so but the message this morning. Uh, just reading through and, and praying over these these verses and and just uh, seeking God what what message to give uh, comes. If you would look back a little bit, uh, I want to look at Peter today when he comes to Jesus. Verse number 42. Verse number 42. And the Bible says, and he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him. He said, thou art Simon. The son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas. 
which is by interpretation a stone. The title of the message, Thou Shalt Be Called. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that have come today. Lord, it's just a blessing to have visitors come, and what an encouragement to us. And, and uh, Father, just uh, thank you for, uh, for the faithful people in Bible Baptist Church. Lord, you gave us a great weekend with that youth rally, and, and uh, Lord, just getting to see so many churches come together, and so many young people that, uh, Lord, just uh, enjoyed the fellowship, and and uh, uh, even kept everybody safe that nobody was injured in the skating and and uh, lord you provide for the food and and the safe travel for all those uh i know uh, one group three hours to drive away uh getting uh, there and then back safely and and uh, lord just provided for it all and i just thank you for that and and uh lord just a, a little bit of uh, of time to rest yesterday and uh, lord just look forward to the day of ministry today with uh the uh, uh sunday school and and service this morning, the nursing home this afternoon, and, and uh, back for the evening service. But, uh, Lord, what a blessing it is to get to serve you. Uh, Lord, this week ahead, this year, as we uh, go into the highways and hedges, I just pray, Lord, that you would, uh, would uh, just bless the ministries. And, Lord, use our lives. Father, you know the potential uh, of what you could do through uh, a few people that are surrendered to you, uh, Lord, that want to be used. And, and, Lord, we want to be used. We want... Uh, Lord, our life to count for more than just ourselves. Lord, we just uh, desire to see some eternal things accomplished in our lifetime. And, and so, Lord, we pray that you might uh, not pass us by, but, uh, Lord, minister through us. Uh, just bless this message this morning and, and uh, Lord, just the uh, other scriptures we'll look at. And, and uh, Father, continue a work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 62 two, just read it to you. It says, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name. Which the mouth of the Lord. Shall name. Uh, when you look at scripture, even in revelations, it says that those that overcome those that are saved. God's going to give them a new name. Uh, if you're saved today, you have a new name. You may not know what your name is. God hasn't revealed that name to you yet. You'll know it when you enter into heaven, when you come to the streets of glory and he calls you by that name. You'll find, uh, you know, Jesus Christ that uh, that he did. And even in the Bible, God gives some new names as they come to meet Jesus Christ. And he lets them know and lets us know what their new name is. We find that here with uh, with Cephas. Uh, as the Bible says, he's his name is, is Simon, Simon Peter. He's the son of Jonah. But his name shall be called, the Bible says, Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The idea of a new name, the blessings of a new name. Thank you, Brother Bud. The blessings of a new name, uh, number one, is adoption. Scripture says when you get saved, you get adopted into his family. If you've ever gone through the adoption process with a child, one of the things that takes place in the adoption is is the the new adoptive parents get to give that child a new name and uh, uh, in, in many cases they'll keep the same first name because that child has grown up with that that first name but uh, but uh, you know we'll, we'll give maybe a new middle name or uh, and most especially a last name and uh, uh, but but it signifies adoption you're now part of a different family when you trust Christ as your Savior the Bible says you get adopted as one of his children you become a child of God by adoption what's exciting about adoption under roman law in the days uh, you know as, as we find in the testament used uh, you were more assured than a blood uh, born child uh, and they actually had in the roman system as a a roman citizen you could uh, you know you, some of you may have thought of that from time to time but you you could divorce your children you could say you could dis disname or disown one of your kids you could say you're no longer my child and legally that was the case but they also had under roman law once you were adopted if you made a decision to adopt a child you never could uh that that child was sealed as your child forever regardless what they turned out like and what problems they caused for you whatever but uh, but uh, uh, they they were yours you were assured god uses that term when we get saved the bible says he adopts us uh that we are adopted the spirit of adoption is what the holy spirit is called the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba, Father. God gives us a new name. 
uh, one day you'll get to find out what that name is. Uh, and a lot of us probably have the same name, Rascal. Uh, you know, a bunch of rascals. But, uh, but whatever, uh, you know, uh, that, that name. But God's got a, a name. Uh, it, it signifies adoption. But it also signifies ownership. Uh, not to, uh, you know, uh, liken people to animals and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you get a pet, you get to name that pet, don't you? Uh, you get to name that. Uh, why? It's now yours. And uh, it, it signifies uh, ownership. And, and the Bible says we're bought with a price. We're not our own. Uh, and, and ownership. Uh, but uh, when God gives a name, that name also signifies potential. Uh, potential. There's a reason that he calls Peter Cephas. Uh, the Bible says here, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Uh, you look at Simon's name, and, and uh, uh, what does it mean? It means a dove. Uh, it means a dove. One that is frightful, flighty, uh, that dove. And he says, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. But he says, thou shalt be called Cephas. What is Cephas? A rock, uh, a stone, uh, something that's steadfast and unmovable and, and dependable, uh, you can see that in the life of Peter as he goes through with, with Christ. He's always, as people say, always the one to stick his foot in his mouth. He's always the one to speak up, and Christ have to address him and, and uh, uh, you know, and such. And, and he is the one that denies Christ, uh, you know, of the, uh, of the apostles. It's given, you know, and, and, and Jesus says, Satan hath desired to sift you. He says, but when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. What he's telling them, there's coming a day you're going to live up to your name. A lot of times parents will give uh, their children names they hope that their kids will live up to. Uh, I've always uh, shared, you don't meet too many uh, parents that name their daughter Jezebel. Uh, that's just not, uh, you know, and they don't name their son Judas. Uh, why? That's, uh, you know, as, as far as, now, now maybe in other countries or whatever, they don't know the Bible, but, uh, but most people that know the Bible, you wouldn't purposely name and, and say, uh, uh, you know, you, you you, uh, uh, you, I want you to live up to the name Judas. I want you to be the betrayer and, and uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, one that betrayed Christ or the, uh, the Jezebel. Uh, but, uh, but again, we, we, we name, you know, we give them a name and, and uh, sometimes you give them a name after uh, somebody famous or somebody that you, uh, you looked up to yourself. Or, uh, but, uh, but again, uh, we give them a name to live up to, uh, a, a good name. Uh, you can't put a price on a good name. And uh, uh, but uh, again, as as uh, you get a, a new name and and the Bible says here is as it just uh, kind of stood out as reading through this. But it says thou art Simon. The son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas. Which is by interpretation. A stone. Uh, I don't know who said it. I heard it at one time and and it just came to mind as look at the lesson. But when God looks at a seed, he sees a tree. When God looks at a seed, he sees a tree. Uh, why? God knows the end from the beginning. Uh, and uh, God's got a design in our life, and God's got a potential for us. And whether we'll live up to that potential or not is yet to be seen. But, uh, but uh, do know that God's got a great plan for every single person's life. Uh, God doesn't do anything halfway. When God created us, he has a wonderful plan for our life. And uh, uh, as, as you think of, uh, of your life, and maybe you say the direction is taken right now is, uh, doesn't look very good, and, and, uh, but, uh, but God's got a, a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, all the members written in a book, the psalmist says, and, and a design, uh, and uh, there are no accidents with God. Now, your mom and dad may have told you you were an accident. Uh, right, Miss Hannah? Say, well, you were an accident. No, we never said that, did we? But... Uh, uh, she just smiled inside to say something, but uh, but uh, they, they may have said, oh, you, you were an accident, but there's no accidents with God. Uh, every person that comes into creation, God takes and puts uh, the uh, soul and spirit into that person and and uh, the soul at birth and the spirit, uh, uh, Lord willing and, and not Lord willing, Lord's willing, but uh, but uh, uh, individual willing that, uh, you know, uh, at, at the new birth, uh, being spiritually born again. God will put a spirit in, but uh, but God's got uh, God's got a plan, a design uh, for every single one. There's no surprises with God. 
uh, uh, mom, so the day that you uh, found out you were pregnant and, and uh, you know, uh, just I mean, it was a surprise. I'm, I'm pregnant. You maybe suspected or whatever, but uh, but I'm pregnant. Well, well, God already knew it. In fact, he knew it before uh, you were even born. Uh, and uh, th- there's no, uh, you know, actions. God's got, got, got a plan in every one of our lives. And, and, and the Bible says as, as uh, Simon is going through life and as he comes before, uh, before uh, uh, Jesus and, and Jesus says, you, you are Simon. But you shall be called Cephas. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, God's saying, I, I got a plan for your life. I got a plan uh, for your life. You, you are. But you shall be. Uh, you shall be. Uh, look with me, if you would, to Genesis in chapter number 12. Genesis chapter number 12. just want to look at three illustrations in Scripture, but uh, Genesis chapter number 12. Here in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. <coughs> kind of amazing with, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Tower of Babel and the confounding of the languages and God caused people to scatter and separate all, uh, throughout the world. And and uh, uh, we come across to Abraham. Abraham doesn't even know God. He's Abram at this time. Uh, God's going to change his name, but uh, but uh, he's he's Abram at this time. And and. Uh, uh, he doesn't know the Lord. There's no evidence that he, you know, has regular conversation with the Lord. And, and yet all of a sudden one day God comes and speaks to him. And it uh, doesn't say a lot about that, but, uh, but uh, the Lord does. In the verse, verse number one, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And thou shalt be a blessing. He's not saying, Abraham, you are a blessing. He's saying, thou shalt be a blessing. When he comes to Abraham, he, he tells him, he says, uh, I got plans for you. Uh, I got plans for you. In fact, I got a wonderful plan for your life. And you're going to be a blessing. He, he goes on to find out he's going to be a blessing to all nations through him. God's going to be a blessing to all nations. And we know it's through uh, Abraham and through uh, his descendants, Jesus Christ comes into this world. God uses Mary to uh, bring his son into this world and, and uh, to save the world. And, and, uh, and so, so the future promise. And, and, uh, but, he, but he tells Abraham, I, I got uh, Abram at this time, I, I got uh, you know, uh, plans uh, for your life. And, and, and so he says uh, to, to Abram, he says, if you'll follow me, if you'll submit to me, if you'll, uh, if you'll uh, put yourself into my hands, if you'll begin to follow and obey and do what I tell you to do, he says, thou shalt be a blessing. Uh, all nations are going to be blessed through you. i got wonderful plans for your life. Now, now, Abraham could have. God gave us a free will. He could have said, no, I'm comfortable staying right here in the city. Uh, if you read about the place that he's living, it was one of the most modern cities of the day. Very, uh, uh, very profitable. Uh, he was involved in business and such there and and his dad and and, you know, as they were staying in that place and and just, uh, you know, archaeology and all says a lot about the uh, the area and and of course the tools and the uh, but uh, but again, he says, I want you to go out and land that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to tell you where it is yet, uh, but I want you to go out and land. I'm going to show you and uh, uh, to, to go out into this land. We, we come to know it as the promised land, uh, the land of Canaan. Uh, where he goes and and uh, but he says uh, you know uh, uh, there he says I and thou shalt be a blessing I I have a a plan for your life uh, Abraham if you'll listen to me if you'll surrender to me I have a plan for your life and you're gonna like it uh, Judges chapter number six Judges chapter six these are some examples in scripture that came to mind Judges chapter number six Remember the, the first time having this passage explained to me and uh, ever since then it's a little bit of a comedy to it but uh, here in Judges chapter number 6 
The Bible says in verse number 7, And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not <coughs> the, the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And, and so uh, they, they come, the Midianites have, have actually uh, taken dominion over them. They've taken everything of value that they have and, and pretty much they live in fear of their lives. They, uh, <coughs> I'm trying to think of the, uh, what's that grasshopper movie I always picture here, uh, you know, with the, the, but the gra- that grasshopper cartoon movie that I uh, watched with you guys has been years ago. Uh, all the mean grasshoppers come and Bugs Life, Bugs Life, very spiritual movie, right? Uh, but uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I, I got to be careful. I don't remember a lot about Bugs Life, but anyway, I always remember those mean grasshoppers. Those bugs would go and they get all the harvest together and they get everything, uh, you know, uh, stored up. And, and boy, those grasshoppers would show up and they'd take it all. And of course, the bugs are saying we're going to starve to death without, you know, uh, I mean, winter's coming and we, uh, you know, the grasshoppers let the bugs do all the work and and uh, they, uh, you know, they, they they take that off. And and uh, you can just, uh, you know, a, a picture here with uh, with with the Midianites that uh, they, they'd wait until harvest season and everything was uh, was uh, uh, all the work was done and the, uh, the harvest was brought in and, and, and then they'd come and they'd steal it all. Uh, they were just bullies. Uh, they, they come and take it all away, and Israel was just suffering because of it. They cry out to God, and, and uh, uh, why won't you help us? God says, you've not obeyed my voice. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we always want God to help us, right? I want God to help me. And, uh, but, but God does ask for uh, our uh, submission and, and uh, looking to him. Uh, look to God when things are good. And they won't get bad. Uh, but no, we wait till they get bad. Then we then we uh, cry out to God and and uh, praise the Lord. You know who to cry out to. I'm not against crying out to God when things get bad. It just uh, as, as we we look here. And so the Midianites, boy, what a place. And the Bible says in verse 11, <coughs> and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in o- Ophrah uh, that pertained to, to unto Joash, the Ab- Abizarite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And uh, I just, uh, you know, shared in this and, and just kind of brought out the, uh, the occasion and stuff. Uh, normally when they threshed wheat, they would do it on top of a mountain. I mean, uh, David, we talk about Ornan's threshing floor. They do it on top of a mountain, uh, a, a flat area on the mountain. They thresh it because uh, when they thresh it, they then throw it up in the air and all the, the chaff would blow away. And the wheat would fall back to the ground, and it's just the way they were able to separate the the wheat from the chaff, and and uh, uh, in, in separating it and such. And so, so they always do up on, on a mountain. But uh, but we find here that uh, you know Gideon he he's down uh, at the at the bottom of the mountain by the wine press, and and he's he, he's threshing the wheat there, and and the Bible says to to hide it. I didn't want the Midianites to see. Oh, look at you know uh, Gideon over there. He's threshing his wheat. He's about ready done. It's about time to go over and steal it all from him. Uh, no, he's secretly. I don't know how how hard it would be to secretly thresh wheat, but uh, but he was uh, he was threshing that wheat uh, and he was doing it in secret. And, and his intent was he's going to hide it. Why? He's afraid of those Midianites. Uh, afraid of, uh, you know, he'd seen time after time they'd come and taken their crops and things. And, and, and so he's down there and he's uh, he's scared. And, and the Bible says in verse 11, and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah. Uh, we can read all those names again. It says, and, and, and Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press. To hide it from the Midianites. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now, there's two ways you can take that. Either the Lord's picking on him. Uh, here he is hiding out, you know, in secret, trying to have scared, scared for his life, trying to thresh that wheat so he can keep it and, and keep it in secret. And God comes and says, Thou mighty man of valor. Maybe he's being sarcastic, you think. It's the uh, uh, boy get in. You sure are tough, uh, you know, hiding out down here. Uh, but I, I don't believe the Lord was just being mean to Gideon. Uh, he knew the troubles of the people and he, he knew the heart of Gideon. Uh, I believe he was saying thou shalt be called. Thou shalt be called. Uh, there's an organization called they call themselves the Gideons. 
and uh, uh, you know they uh, uh, of course the jails the the, the uh, hotels the, the different different places in the world getting the word of God out uh, and they, they got that because uh, you know again uh, uh, Gideon's a good name Gideon was a man of valor uh, he was a man that God greatly used not while he was hiding uh, there under the mountain threshing the wheat and in fact uh, he's the one if you've ever heard you know somebody say I gotta lay out my fleece uh, God said, I want you to go and and uh, uh, destroy that that idol of your dad's that he worships Baal with. I want you to go destroy that and and uh, get in. He does it at night. Why? He's afraid. Uh, he's scared and uh, he's not the mighty man of valor. And then he says, now I want you to go and and lead the nation of Israel against the Midianites and and uh, uh, I'll give you the victory. And and uh, we find, uh, you know, uh, Gideon. Well, well, wait a minute got to make sure I'm hearing this right and, and so of course he puts out the fleece and and uh, you know whichever order it goes uh, that uh, you know if you'll you'll make the the, the ground wet the fleece dry uh, then then I'll know it's you and I'll go and he wakes up the next morning the ground's wet the fleece is dry uh, and then he, and then and then uh, he says okay go and he well wait a minute wait a minute we really want to make sure it's you really want to make sure and so uh, if you'd make the the fleece wet and the ground dry uh, tomorrow then I'll know it's you and and uh, sure enough and so finally he's like, oh, okay I guess I gotta go and so he leads and and, and and you know pretty pretty amazing and excited because uh, he, he goes out and he sounds the horn and he calls the people and all the men of Israel come out I mean there's just people everywhere and they're all coming out to the battle and and uh, they get out there to go to battle and and so Gideon's probably starting to feel pretty good now you got a lot of people with you and uh, you know but God comes to him and he says you know there's too many people <laughs> what do you mean there's too many people uh, uh, as, as far as I can see, I can see the Midianites. You can't count them. The Bible says there's so many. Uh, you can see their campfires, and you can see the soldiers, uh, you know, getting ready to fight. And and uh, uh, Israel, even with as many as they have, is still small in comparison. And God says, No, there's there's too many. Uh, he says because uh, if you guys go out there and you beat the Midianites, you, you'll take the credit for it. You'll think it's because you had all these men come out. And and, and so he says, uh, uh, Go ahead and 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 tell the armies if anybody's afraid, they can go home. Uh, Gideon, me, me too. <laughs> you can just kind of picture me too. I, Lord, can I go home? No, not you. Uh, but anybody else is afraid can go home, and, and and all of a sudden thousands of people start to peel off and and, and head home, and and Gideon's kind of looking around, and uh, you know now he's just down in size, and and uh, and the Lord says, uh, "There's still too many." <laughs> what do you mean too many? And uh, uh, he says, "Now I want you to have them go down and drink and." And uh, there's those that'll, you know, uh, just no regards and whatever, fall down on their face and start sucking water. And there's those that are going to, you know, uh, uh, be uh, battle wary and, and ready and whatever. And, and uh, those that, uh, uh, you know, uh, dip out and take, uh, those are the ones that are going to go to battle. And so he separates 300 men. He ends up 300 men against all the Midianites. And, uh, uh, and then, he, then he says to Gideon, he says, uh, are you still afraid? <laughs> More than ever. Uh, he says, I want you to go ahead, you, you know, go down and, and uh, I want to encourage you. And so uh, go ahead and, and at night sneak down close to their camp and, and uh, to check on the Midianites. And so he sneaks down. Two men are out there talking on guard and, and they start talking about how they're afraid of Gideon. Afraid of what Gideon's God's going to do to them. And, and just talking about the fear that's in the Midians, even though they uh, can't even number. Uh, you know, that's going on in their heart. And, and so Gideon's encouraged and, and he goes out there. And, and, and if, if you've read the account, read, uh, you know, this account in Judges. But uh, but they take pictures and inside the pictures, uh, you know, is, uh, of course, the, the oil lamp uh, that's inside. And and so you can't see it till you're up to the camp. And he, he, he says they want you to, you know, come to a time and and, 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 br and break it. We'll all break it at the same time. And and we'll shout together these 300 men. Uh, the uh, uh, sword of the Lord and Gideon and and uh, and and of course, uh, you know, those are the things they feared uh, the Lord uh, God, uh, the God of Gideon and Gideon. And and so uh, uh, so they do. They wake up. They see these lights, you know, and normally in an army attack. Uh, one light means a whole company of soldiers. Well, there's 300 lights. That's a lot of soldiers coming down on them. The people are stirred up in the middle of their sleep. They start fighting each other and killing each other. And of course, a great victory. Uh, that takes place Gideon goes on to serve the Lord rest of his life and, and you know God is saying uh, not uh, you know you are but you shall be uh, God saw in Gideon if Gideon would surrender to, surrender to God what Gideon could become what Gideon was going to become uh, in his life uh, how many people don't ever become what God has planned in their life because they won't surrender to him God's got great plans for our life 
Look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. Third illustration. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. Here in 1 Samuel chapter number 16, uh, Saul has disobeyed. He's not become the king that God knows he could become. In fact, it comes to a point that God says, you're done. Uh, You're done. Uh, I'm going to find me a new king. And so he sends Samuel. uh, Here in in chapter 16, verse 1, it says, The Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So I want to show you who the next king's going to be. Verse 2, and Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to the sacrifice to the Lord. Call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do. Thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Samuel did that which was the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, comest thou peaceably? He said peaceably. It's kind of like getting called to the principal's office, I guess, when the prophet shows up. Because uh, there's a lot of places he could be in Israel. Oh, wait a minute, what's, what's he coming here for? Is God got upset about something? He said peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. It came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or in the height of his stature, because I have refused him from uh, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God's not so much concerned about your talent. Uh, He's God. Uh, He doesn't need your talent. Uh, God's not uh, so concerned about your education. Uh, Hannah, you still got to do your homework. Uh, God's not so concerned. I, I just know I'm picking on Hannah today. Just I, you just got to do your homework, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, don't think, well, God, you, Dad, you said God doesn't care about our education. So, uh, but uh, uh, God's not so so concerned about how smart you are uh, or how tough you are. God's concerned about your heart. God's tough enough. He's smart enough. He's talented enough that he can do it without you. And he can do it without me. Uh, He's more concerned about your heart. And when he looks at a man, uh, he sees what's in a man's heart. And here the Bible says that as Samuel comes, he he sees sees Eliab, the oldest, and and, uh, of course in in, Israel, in Israel and in many cultures, the firstborn was kind of the the pride and joy, uh, and uh, and and so uh, uh, he he was the one to get the double inheritance of the uh, the uh, and the one to kind of take over the lead of the family when dad died and and uh, uh, of course many of those families became tribes and 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 so would become the uh, in, in in manner of speaking the king, uh, but uh, but anyway so so he comes to the firstborn and and, and he's he's probably physically fit and. And, and, and a little bit more mature and and whatever than the other brothers and and uh, and so he comes and and of course uh, Samuel says to the Lord uh, you know they're, they're not not outwardly before them but is, is this the one and, and the Lord says no not him uh, you know a man looks after the outward appearance but the Lord looks after the heart he goes to the second born what about this one no not him not him not him not him uh, all seven of those sons they come before him and he says no not him not him not him not him, not him. and uh, I guess down the last one well Looks over at Jesse. Is, is is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? Uh, well, yeah, the baby of the family, the runt. Uh, you know, he's he, he's out there taking care of the sheep. We didn't, you know, think it was so important to have him here. Uh, when you said the family come together and we're gonna have this uh, this feast before the Lord and offer the sacrifice and 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 whatever, we we didn't think you meant him. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, he's out there uh, taking care of the sheep. That's what he likes to do. He's happy doing that. Just uh, you know, we we just kind of leave him uh, leave him to it and. And uh, uh, Sammy says, well, we're not going to partake until he comes. 
And uh, as soon as he walks in, God says, that's, that's the one. He became King David. Uh, you know, he fought all the nations uh, that were warring against Israel, and, and he, he was actually very fierce in battle. He's the one that stood against Goliath. Uh, who haven't heard of David and Goliath? Uh, and, uh, uh, but, you know, his family, everybody else, they just, they just saw a shepherd. Uh, you read in the Psalms, David just saw a shepherd. He was happy. I, I just want to grow up and be a shepherd. I want to spend my life being a shepherd. It must have been pretty nice. You know, for him, although he had to fight a lion and a bear, but uh, but uh, to, to be a shepherd. But he was content being a shepherd and and uh, just happy right there. But, you know, he had a heart that was surrendered to the Lord. God said of David, I find in him what a, a man after mine own heart who is ready to do all my will. Uh, David was surrendered uh, to the Lord. He came to Peter and he says, thou art. Simon, thou shalt be called Cephas. I don't know what it was like on the day of Pentecost, but it must have been something to preach the gospel and 3,000 people get saved and baptized. A couple chapters later, 5,000 uh, follow the Lord. Peter ended up dying on a cross Preaching, the, uh, preaching Jesus, uh, he became a rock. He became that, that stone that God said he could become if he would surrender uh, and follow him. History says that when they went to crucify Peter on a cross, I don't know how this all works out, but uh, he said he wasn't worthy to be put to death like the Savior was. and uh, History says, anyway, that they turned the cross upside down, crucified him upside down uh, there upon the cross. And because uh, uh, he, he asked not, because he wasn't worthy to die like his, his Savior did, but he, he gave his life to preach in Christ. Uh, you're a dove. You're flighty, uh, untrustworthy, frightful, but you're going to be a stone. Uh, you're going to be a stone if you surrender to me. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. The scriptures I looked up, just going to read them to you, but you can write them down. Psalms 147, the Bible says in verses 10 and 11, He delighteth not in strength of horses, he taketh not pleasure, in the legs of a man. Uh, he's talking about the strength uh, in a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. In those that hope in his mercy. Proverbs 31.30 says, Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. That's what God's looking for. Uh, it's completely different than what this world is looking for. How's your relationship with him? Second Corinthians 5, 16, speaking of salvation, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, the Bible says. Old things passed away, all things become new. Well, verse 16 says, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. He says, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Uh, what you see today is not necessarily what you're going to get tomorrow. Uh, we, we look at a man, but God sees what he could become. Uh, we look at a child, and uh, of course, as, as parents, you've got plans and hopes for your kids, and you want them to succeed, and, and uh, uh, you definitely want you know, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, them to have a glad, a good, joyful, uh, fulfilled life. Uh, you want more for them than you have for yourself. But when God looks at a child, uh, he can make all that take place. He can make it all happen. I was reading my devotions this morning in Deuteronomy, and, and uh, I, I just read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 8. But uh, uh, chapter 7 and verse 12, you come to it, and, and he's speaking to Israel. He says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall 
And you go through and you read the rest of that chapter and you say, wow, wouldn't that be great? I mean, just blessing after blessing after blessing. Everything your hand touches. Uh, you know, the Bible says blessing after blessing. He says, I- if thou shalt. And then he comes to chapter 8 and he says, and when you get it all. Uh, when you're obedient and I give it all to you, he says, don't forget me. Uh, don't forget me. Start to think you're the one that did it. Any success you or I have in life, if we begin to take the credit for it and say, oh, yeah, it's because of my talents, it's because of my ability, uh, you're going to mess it up. Uh, any, the Bible says every good gift cometh from above. So you can look at every good thing in your life and praise God for it. You begin to think, well, it's because I'm so smart. Boy, I'm glad I'm not like that person ignorant or whatever or wasteful or uh, you know uh, sure I'm glad that I'm not like them and uh, uh, because if I was like them I wouldn't be like me Uh, be careful it's God that does it Uh, God's the one that gives all those good things from heaven it's not our smarts it's not our ability America is not great today because of Americans Americans are made up of every nation of the world Truly, what has made America great? God. Uh, You look at the foundations of our nation and where our nation used to stand and God's blessings. We're still reaping the harvest today from those things. But we're living in America that says we we don't want God. Uh, We got the scientists. We got the doctors. We got the lawyers. We got the politicians. We uh, we got the money. We got the resources. Uh, we got uh, all of these things. We're a mighty nation. There's no nation in this world that can attack us and and hope to win. And and uh, uh, we got all these things. And and uh, America needs to be careful. Uh, praise the Lord for Christians, for churches across this land that are still honoring God. That is what keeping back the hand of judgment of God. Uh, Stay faithful to the Lord. If there be ten in the city, uh, he said, I will not destroy it. uh, But there wasn't even ten there in Sodom and Gomorrah. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Submit to him. Look for God's direction. Ask for God's design. Just see what God might do. I want to finish with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. It says in verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I look at that word wholly, completely, inside and out, upside and down, backside and forward. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. That's inside to out. God starts with the spirit. When you get spiritually born again, He begins to take with his spirit community, with your spirit, take care of that soul, your heart inside you. And then pretty soon it begins to affect your body, uh, your outward actions. The Bible says uh, your your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. God looks at a seed and sees a tree. What does God see when he looks at a wicked man? A saint. A saint. God sees what that man has the potential of becoming if he just surrender himself to the Lord. The Bible says when a lost man comes to Jesus, there's not a single lost man still breathing on this earth that could not be saved if they would just come to Christ and submit to him. God's got wonderful plans for their life. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, God would save you if you just ask him. 
your wickedness is not greater than the grace of God. His grace is unsearchable. If you'd come to Him and ask Him, He'd save you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. If you trust Christ as your Savior, He'd save you. Christians, the potential's great. Bible Baptist Church, what's God going to do this year? The potential's there, but are we going to surrender to Him? Are we going to be willing to work the works of Him while it is day? For the night cometh when no man works. Are we willing to roll up our sleeves and surrender ourselves to the Lord and see what God might do through Bible Baptist Church this year? Uh, souls saved, lives changed, people ministered to. You'll find anytime you give anything to God, you get more than you give. Far more than you give. So you might end the day tired. And boy, that was that was work. The next day you get up, you rejoice in what God did. And you got to be a part of it. Let's stand as we have the invitation this morning. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, Come to Christ today. The Bible says, Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just simply humble yourself, acknowledging you need a Savior, and ask Him, Jesus would save you today. It's a free gift He wants to give you, the gift of eternal life. Uh, Christians, would you surrender this year to the Lord? Just see what God might do in your life this year. Uh, What God could use and accomplish in your family, uh, in your friends, in your place of work, in your neighborhood, in your church, because you surrendered yourself to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this invitation. I, I, I do pray if there's uh, one person here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, uh, I know you'd leave the 99 to go find that one. Lord, you're seeking them today, and I, uh, I just pray today that they'd not hesitate, but Uh, would come to you as their Savior. Uh, Lord, for the Christians here today, uh, may we find out what your potential in our lives is. Uh, May we find out what that new name is that you have for each of us, that plan that you have in our lives. And we just simply surrender ourselves, humbling ourselves under your mighty hand that in due time you might raise us up. Just bless this invitation time in Jesus' name. Amen.